So I I got my master's in social work, and, and the year I was graduating, Muhammad Yunus, who is sort of considered the, the father of microfinance, he started the Green, Grameen Bank, was getting the Nobel Peace Prize. So there was a lot of conversations about microlending and, um, and using that as a tool to address poverty around the world. And I was enthralled, like so many people were, um, but also a little concerned. I think a lot of the language at the time around microfinance and in, in still some circles today was that it was a solution to poverty and that you know it was going to anything that's a solution to poverty has to be questioned, obviously, since poverty is a very complicated problem. Um, but you know, it, it, it was concerning to a social worker. And so in kind of taken through that lens, most microfinance banks charge really high interest because they're servicing people in very rural areas and, and the cost of doing so is high. So to make back the money that they can then lend to other people, they charge high interest. But if you're a woman who's been sexually trafficked or if you've been a victim of a war crime, You've gone through a lot of trauma and taking high interest rate loans is terrifying and, and loan sharks are rampant that abuse abuse lending in a lot of places so it, it's a scary thing um, and then sort of kind of corollary to that in the United States lending is a first step to starting a business that's how you get capital but then you need a business education you need advice you need support you need a market for whatever it is that you're trying to sell or do in um, in micro lending abroad in these developing countries was just about lending. So it seemed to me difficult to solve poverty just with loans. So, you know, the women needed business education, they needed literacy, they needed markets to sell their goods, they needed, you know, so many other pieces to the puzzle. And so I wanted to create an organization that was much more about successful business creation. So how do women artisans not just take out loans, but then actually have successful, sustainable businesses. And so um, we do a whole host of other things. But um, we are kind of founded on this premise that I called micro bartering. So we gave women artisans loans um, to start craft businesses. They repaid in product rather than in cash. We took those products, sold them in the United States, made money selling them, and reinvested that capital in the artisan businesses. So we are still cyclical like traditional lending, but without charging interest to the women. So it was sort of a safer model that in addition to being a loan to start the businesses also gave them exporting marketplace and, and income from sales. Um, and then we've, you know, kind of added services and grown from there. But that was kind of our initial premise.